ثانك يو جينيفيف شكرا مساء الخير جميعا واهلا وسهلا بجميع الزملاء الحاضرين معنا الليله اولا اود ان اتفضل بالشكر الى الانسه جينيفيف التي تساعدنا دائما في تنظيم ورش العمل هذه وعلى دعمها الدائم لنا ثانيا اود ان اشكر ايضا الاستاذه ميمي ملكونيان والاستاذ فادي ابو غوش على عملهما الدؤوب في مجموعه اساتذه اللغه العربيه التابعه لاكتفل وعلى مساعدتهما في تنظيم ورش العمل هذه واختيار المقدمين والمواضيع المطروحه وثالثا اتفضل بشكر كبير واود ان ننضم جميعا لنرحب بالاستاذه منى عزام التي تنضم الينا هذا المساء مباشره من دمياط في مصر وهي تقارب الان الساعه الثانيه صباحا هناك فنحن فانت مشكوره جدا استاذه منى على تقديمك لنا هذا المساء آه لمن لا يعرفها آه الأستاذة منى هي مؤلفة وباحثة ومدرسة لغة عربية حاصلة على ماجستير آه في آه اللغويات التطبيقية آه تدريس اللغة العربية لغير الناطقين بها من الجامعة الأمريكية في القاهرة وهي أيضا مؤسسة الموقع الإلكتروني ArabicGlobal.com الذي يوفر دروس عربية آه على شكل فيديو أونلاين للطلاب العربية لغير الناطقين بها وتتناول أبحاثها منهجيات التدريس واستخدام التكنولوجيا في صفوف العربية لغير الناطقين بها وغيرها من المواضيع ونحن محظوظون كثيرا هذا المساء للاستماع لتقديمها ولمشاركة معلوماتها معنا أستاذة منى تفضلي شكرا جزيلا على هذا التقديم و thank you so much for attending the webinar uh, it's definitely a pleasure to be here uh, okay so let me share my screen with you so we can start <clears throat> so everyone is able to see my screen now like uh, my cursor moving nope you just turned it off Mona okay yeah I did sorry there we go yep <laughs> All right, so today, inshallah, I'm going to be talking about integrating comics in the Arabic as a foreign language classroom. Um, we're going to start a little bit by literature, what are comics and why do we need to use comics and how to integrate it in our uh, classrooms and mentioning some activities and some tools that can help us with the process. And then we're going to talk about some tips um, very particular to the context of Arabic classrooms. So starting with this question, uh, do you or did you use comics or graphic novels in your Arabic as a foreign language uh, class before? So if you can type in the chat yes, if you did, no, if you didn't. Right. I'm not sure if you can. <laughs> okay. Right. So it looks like, I don't know if you see the responses, Mona. It's about, I would say it's about 50 50. A little oh, more okay. no's than yeses. Yeah. That's, that's a good start then. Okay. So starting with what are comics or graphic novels? So basically, it's a sequential art. It's images in a deliberate sequence, and this is very important. I will discuss this point. It's a multimodal text that contains gesture, images, sound, and writing, um, and it forms a narrative. So as you can see in here, we, this is a sample of an Egyptian comic strip um, that contains um, speech bubbles, um, thought bubbles, and sound words, and also narration boxes. This feature of having a narrative or telling a story through a narrative um, distinguishes comics from caricatures, for instance. As you see in a caricature, you have like all the information condensed in one panel and um, it, there is no chance of dialogue as much uh, as you can see in comics. So basically it tells me a story, it's a narrative form, 
and there is a dialogue in there. So that distinguishes uh, comics from other multimodal texts. What's interesting about comics is, uh, for example, in Brown 1977, he says that ling it contains linguistic codes, um, standard and spoken. And we can see this in a lot of Egyptian comics, in a lot of comics in, the, in Arabic. For example, as you will see, the narration boxes would be in standard Arabic. It would be in modern standard Arabic. However, the speech bubbles and the thought bubbles would be in Egyptian colloquial Arabic. So you see, um, if you're interested in kind of integration, comics uh, would be an authentic source that offers such a thing. So why comics? Comics can be helpful for you uh, improving your students' reading uh, skills, particularly comprehension, making inferences, and so on. So it helps your students uh, with comprehension, and there are a ton of studies on that. Um, it helps with vocabulary acquisition. It helps students with their motivation and engagement. It, it motivates them more to read and motivates them also to learn the language. Um, it helps with cognitive skills, culture. It's a, you know, a pop cultural text, so definitely it can help with that. It can help with speaking, particularly in that case, in that study by Williams, um, it, it focused on paragrammatics. Uh, so he was actually focusing on the usage of certain expressions in the text, how students would actually act the, the comic out and uh, what, what are the intonation that they're going to use. So in that case, it was helpful for uh, particular um, features of the language, uh, particularly paragrammatics in this case. It helps definitely with writing. As we will see, um, some examples of comics were used as a prompt where our students were, uh, can respond to. But most importantly, you can also analyze these comics in order to kind of um, help the students with writing. So for example, it depends really on your purpose. You can use the comic in order to help the students with their writing. So there are a number of studies I'm citing below for, or, uh, that indicates that. And instead of actually giving the students a ready made comic and uh, they can read it, you can also ask your students to create comics. And there's also a number of studies and research that says that this is motivating and engaging. It enhances thinking skills and promotes creativity. It increases the student's level of comprehension and grammar and vocabulary usage, writing and outlining skills. It helps students identify basic story elements and uh, it helps with autonomy and self-directed learning along with collaborative learning as well and that can also help with culture because students need to focus on things like level of register and stylistic variations um, <clears throat> now we move on how to integrate comics in the arabic as a foreign language classroom so one of the ideas you could uh, implement in your classes is actually using a silent comic. So this is not really an academic uh, term, but this is what I came up with uh, for a comic that does not tell a story by words, but it tells it through illustrations. So as you can see in here, I'll give you a minute to, or less than a minute, just to take a look at this. This is a few panels of um, a comic story that, or a comic strip that uh, may be taking around four or five pages in Hadith al -Fair. So you can see the source there. Um, you can see that it tells you a story without even saying much. Uh, you know, there is no dialogue in this case, there is no narration boxes. In that case, you can give that to students and then they can actually create the story themselves. So they can create the story themselves and uh, it runs and you know, it helps students run a discussion based on the topic. So when I gave this to my students, it stirred on a lot of topics. Um, and, yeah, and many, many topics that came out and each student interpreted differently, which is very interesting. Um, another important point is that sometimes your students would notice things um, that you, for example, in that case, I had never thought of that before my students asked me. One of the students, he had never been into um, a study abroad program. He's never been to um, Egypt or anything like that. 
So the question that he asked, why there are so many cats in the illustration? What is the representation? Why, why there are cats in every single panel? It's repetitive that he sees a lot of the cats on the street. Um, I didn't answer him, actually. The answer came from other students who went to Egypt on the study abroad programs and the summer programs and so on, and they discussed. So we ran a discussion on this cultural um, feature of some of the Egyptian streets, that there are some cats on the streets and so on. So it, it brought up a discussion that, you know, it was not originally among my lesson plan, but then it came out from the student because each student sees it a bit differently. So again, you can actually give the students for a speaking practice, a discussion, um, or even just, you know, ask them to create the dialogue, to create the story, to speak to, to, uh, for the characters, to represent the characters, what, what this character would say at that time, and so on. Another thing you could do is actually you could pull out these from the internet, search it. It's very easy to find um, any of these uh, whitened bubbles in comics. And you can ask your students to fill, uh, to fill in that dialogue, but make sure, unfortunately, when you get these um, comics online, you would find that, this one I got from Pinterest, but you will find that the story starts from the left, if you're an Arabic teacher and your students are learning Arabic, then you just need to make sure that um, they start from the right and so on. So pay attention to these small details because it happens. Uh, so in this case, um, you can present your students with these and they can, you know, what is the, the character, the main character is saying in this case. All right, so this I pulled out, as I said, from uh, Pinterest, you can find many for other languages uh, that uh, foreign language classes that are available online. Another idea you can do is you can cut out the panels and ask your students to rearrange them. So they have to kind of understand what's going on and it helps collaboration and so on. Uh, or you could actually cut out the 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 speech bubbles or the text and separate it from the illustrations not necessarily with this one but you could do it with anything that you separate separate the text from the illustrations and then uh, you ask students to match okay so what is the speech bubble where is it fit in which panel and so on more ideas uh, is actually you can remove the last panel and your students can think of an ending, a different ending of that. So most of these are pulled out from literature. <clears throat> Some I developed uh, on my own, but other than that, they're mostly from literature. So you can, uh, as I said, uh, remove the last panel. The students think of a different ending, complete that ending, and, um, you know, transform a reading text. So you give them, whether the reading text is a comic or just a story, they can summarize it or retell it or transform it into a comic. So it really very much depends. These activities, you know, you have, it's, it's just ideas that you can apply in your classes, but really it depends. Are you going to give them a text, a regular text, a story, and then they need to create it into a comic or just a comic, and then they need to do something else with the, as a result. So you have these different options that you can do um, in your classes. <clears throat> um, okay, so one of the things that you could do as well is you can create a comic retelling a favorite fairy tale. Create a comic and read it with appropriate intonation. And in this case, as you can see, we're activating more oral production. Uh, create a comic and act it out. Students, Yanni, in suggest that a lot and they enjoy it um, a lot. Uh, sequence the comic, fill in the balloons. I think we discussed this already. Imagine the character thoughts. Um, complete the comic, develop the comic after it ends. You know, you create another volume of that comic. Um, create another episode of the comic. Change the story to represent a different perspective. How the character is related to you. So you actually create this, ask your students to create a comic or 
um, discuss this point. It's again, it's totally up to you how the character is related to them. Choose a character from the from the comic and develop a story. Create a comic to raise awareness. So as we will see, we'll see an actual example of that. Uh, the some of the students did an environmental awareness campaign. And that was really interesting. Zimmerman, Bill Zimmerman has a ton of creative writing tasks that you could do and that um, can be applicable to uh, comics and comic tasks. Either you can create these stories on your own and then give it to your students as a reading text if you would like, um, or you can ask your students to uh, actually create them. So for example, we have here, you have three wishes. What are they? I think he did a great job on these, honestly. With a snap of a finger, you could change yourself. Who or what would you become? Some reason I cannot, uh... sorry, hurry. Okay. Um, <clears throat> someone gives you a golden treasure box. What would you place it? Where would you place it? What would you place in it? Imagine you could talk with a character from a favorite book. You are giving a favorite animal characteristic. What animal would you choose and what kind of trait that you would have? Create a new season different from those we know. So you see the level of creativity involved in these tasks. Your main character writes a poem or sings a song. Throw a big party. Where would it be? What is the theme and who would you invite? Your characters are given the power to be bold and brave for one day. What would they do? What deeds would they do? Your character passes a message to another and another and so on. How, is that, how would the original message uh, change? Um, you can actually get, <clears throat> so Zimmerman has um, his own website for that you can create comics through, uh, which is called uh, Makes Beliefs Comics, Make Beliefs Comics. Um, and he, there's a section called something to write about. This is a very in interesting, I hope you still see that. All right, so here we have um, some more ideas, actually. Some more creative ideas. So we have here, step into favorite painting. Imagine that you could live in a favorite painting. Which one would you choose? What would this experience be like? About bullying, have you ever been bullied? And you know, make sure that you're um, careful with the topics you choose. But in any case, I think his um, tasks are very creative. What if you could do anything? And um, although I, you know, you, he has a simple makes beliefs comics is a simple website where you can create your own uh, comics somehow, but um, I would discuss another one with you later on. I'm just going to check the chat box right now and see if you have any questions for me. Uh, Genevieve, if you, I, I'm not sure why I'm not able to click on the chat box. It gives me. We don't have anything coming in yet. Um, okay. If we want to give people a couple seconds, if anyone has any questions, let us know. Otherwise, we will move on. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Genevieve. Okay, so these are ideas and uh, I'm posting the link at the document that Genevieve will send it to you later on so you can uh, see more ideas. So this is again an example of some of the things that you could do. This is something that I applied, you don't have to apply it this way. I asked my students to um, read a comic about a particular topics, so for example environment. Um, they read a comic called Rabat al-Ajjar and as a comic creation task they were supposed to create an environmental uh, awareness campaign. Uh, there is an, one another one about refugees called Ma'bar Hududi and there's a task uh, called Asylum Seeker. So really, again, uh, it depends on, these are just ideas, it depends on what, what's the purpose, what's the objective of your class. So the comic called Ma'bar Hududi, this one is about refugees, and the task was called Asylum Seeker. So students were divided into families and uh, they need to decide uh, some things on their asylum, who are they going to take, a list of things, uh, we're going to see some examples of this uh, later on, but this is just to give you an idea. 
the comic creation tool that I choose for um, that I ask my students or I, I create comics uh, on is called Storyboard That. So there are other tools like Tundu, which supports Arabic, makes believes comics, it supports Arabic kind of. Comic Live at some versions, but there are differences between those. Um, I found that the best, um, in my opinion, would, would be Storyboard That. Um, for it's, you know, it didn't glitch as much. <laughs> it was good uh, with the students. Unfortunately, it's not free. You can create a, a storyboard kind of for free, but in order for you to be able to create classes or assignments or a storyboard, then you actually need to um, pay a subscription. Okay, uh, so we're going to take a look at storyboard that. That's how it looks, but we're going to take a live kind of tour on it. Okay. I hope you can see that. Okay. Right. So in order for you to go to uh, to create a storyboard, you need to go to storyboard that and then create a storyboard. So one of the things that I really like, besides, of course, that it supports Arabic about storyboard that is that you can actually choose from a good amount um, of backgrounds. So really, that gives you students more options. That gives you more options to create a comic. So entertainment, home, indoor, outdoor, school, athletics, transportation, work, and so on. So all we need to do is, for example, I'm going to drag this background right here in the cell, and then I can alternate and change uh, some of the features uh, based on these options that I see. So I can flip it, rotate it, do, do these things. Characters. Again, another excellent feature that you have cultural uh, characters. For example, um, you can have a one in hijab, like a hijabi woman. Um, okay, you have, you can see that some people from Pakistan and other Asia, Middle East and so on. So that gives you again and your students more options. So in order for me to be able to edit um, this character, for example, you want it to look to the right, left, and so on. You can um, rotate it from here, but edit pose. And that will give you the option of showing expressions. So you might be crying, or you might be angry, or whatsoever. And then you can update the pose. You can allow your character to take like a side view or back view. So in this case, for example, I'm going to make it. Uh, with a side view and then you can change some of the colors with the hijab for example I want it to be more colorful and again I can rotate so they speak to each other and then you can add text balls here you can you know you have your thought bubbles you have some sound words you have speech bubbles and so on so in this case I'm going to choose a speech bubble and I'm going to write in Arabic so once you you start writing in Arabic, for example, anything like that. Uh, you would find that it takes, um, it, it, it supports Arabic basically. And you can, they have a couple of funds, I think, for, I think, Latif or something else that, um, sorry, that you can use. So you have here a ton of funds, but a few fonts that support Arabic, which is Latif and something else. Ah, oh, this one as well. So these two supports Arabic and this one. Um, you can add shapes, infographics, where this is excellent because as I will show you some samples, you will find that sometimes students would uh, are, like did not find the image or the picture that they want to use and that is related to their story within storyboard that so they uploaded an image they googled an image and they uploaded an image to the their storyboard or to their comic and in that case uh, they actually uh, you know have more available options 
Okay, so this is where you can save and you can definitely you can add or delete cells, move cells and so on. So really this is uh, what you could do initially. And there is a tutorial that I made so that again will be shared with the document that you can, um, you know, look at before you use uh, Storyboard that. <clears throat> okay, so students mostly uh, find Storyboard that engaging, motivating, and boosts creativity. Um, again, my option, because I teach online mostly, was to ask students to create these comics digitally in a digital form using Storyboard that. However, in your classes, you do have the option. If you find like your students, give your students the option, I think you will see a lot of interesting results that students maybe who does not are not good uh, doesn't have artistic skills that they would go and do it digitally students who have more artistic skills that they can um, actually use that skill in creating a comic by drawing or something like that so definitely um, try that out so easy it's easy to use and learn and satisfying to use and full of different resources and features Okay, so this is the task. I, I just adapted it a bit. Uh, you know, you're a member of a Syrian family, you're forced to leave their home because of the war, discuss the reasons of your fleeing. You and your family are forced to decide who to take and who to leave, the methods of transportation, 10 most important items to take with you as a family, why are you hiding, what documents. You see, these are different things that they couldn't think about. Um, so we will see some sample comics that the students created right <clears throat> for this task and other tasks so this students for instance started uh you will notice actually that when students create comics that they have to think about other aspects and other elements that they usually don't think about in texts um not about the title though but they have to situate the story they have to have like a uh, an interesting introduction and ending a message and so on so really if they're writing a story maybe they would have some of these elements but the comic kind of forces them to uh, activate uh, these elements and uh, utilize these elements so first of all the title that he, he chose is and then he was like giving me a little bit of background, you know, في عام 2011 بدأت حرب أهلية في سوريا and so on. And he found a note. Ooh, what does that note say? يا دوني غدرنا إلى مكتب والدك. And so on. So I'll give you a um, few seconds to see. Right. What's interesting here is that the student. For example, if you see the narration boxes, uh, I did not uh, correct the initial writing. Um, the narration boxes, he actually found that this is a way that he could use both. Uh, so in the initial uh, narration box, it's written in standard Arabic, but the dialogues uh, where in Shami, which was the dialect that he learned at his university. So, uh, and so on. And at the end, he decided that, okay, I'm going to actually um, send a message, kind of. Another response, uh, to that task was another student who started her story by Ila Ain and then gives you a little bit about background about her being in the family and showing expressions that they sat to leave. Remember that images option? So she did not have such images in Storyboard that, so she was able to up upload the images um, of destruction and so on uh, to the uh, to the website and use it in her comic. So in this case, she made a list. ملابس قليلة, الدولار, المجوهرات, نظاراتي, and so on. So she made a list of things that she's going to pick up. 
I will take with her. Uh, okay, things in the camps that they faced difficulty with. I kind of I like this panel particularly. لا أحب المخيم هو ليس بيتي في بيتي أجد أبي وأمي ونضحك وأخي ونضحك نحن آمنون الآن لكن تركنا الكثير من الأشياء المهمة. So I, I guess they're able to express more with uh, these tasks. Okay, that's another response. I'll just uh, not go over it, but show it to you real quick. This was another uh, task where, you know, remember the environmental awareness campaign? Students were uh, asked to do, to create one using a comic. And this student, um, she was actually, I think, a biology major. <laughs> she, was, she chose a particular, this um, child that she's going to discuss um, how to protect it from extension and so on. So she explained the whole process. And how can we kind of um, help maintain um, or keep these? Um, I don't know what is it in English to be honest. <clears throat> Mona, we did have a question asking if these examples you're showing, if these are from that website you were just showing, to, to clarify. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Aren't, aren't they awesome? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the students use the storyboard that. To, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to see the chat. Now I do. Uh, so yeah, actually, um, they were used like create your own storyboard that. So it was actually done on the storyboard that. So students were able to create it on storyboard that. So yeah, to answer your question, yes. But you know, I was amazed actually with the different responses and how they um, how they responded with these stories. Okay, so this is another response to uh, creating an environmental campaign. So students in this case, the student in this created more of a dialogue. That, like he started his story, okay, he's meeting his friend the, at the restaurant and then what, why you're upset? I'm upset because, you know, the earth is suffering and talawuth rahib, talawuth laysa khatar and bi'in and al and so on. Um, and then he sees someone throwing something on the on the ground and then he's like, you should not do that and showing an angry face. And then, um, you know, okay, can we, so he's kind of delivering a message. Okay, we're gonna talk to our teachers to kind of increase that course in our system, educational system, can you do that? Yeah, we can do that. Um, and then he kind of created a funny thing in here دوري أحب السباحة في مياه نظيفة واضحة لقد نسيت ماذا تعني المياه من أنا نمو <laughs> and so on so he's creating uh, something related and by the way it's interesting to say that these are adults like um, they ranged but most of the comics that I've shown you uh, would actually plus 20 like they're 20 above like uh, university level students um, so yeah they're, they're not kids but i guess they enjoyed it uh one last example i'll show you is when i asked students they read a comic called La Kunta Malika, and the comic creation task was based on that reading was actually uh, for them to create a comic uh, represent telling the story of what if they were a king or queen so uh, the student in this case uh, decided to title her comics Al Malik Al Wahid. Mamlakati Satakun Mamlakat Al Salam Wal Aman Wal Thaqafa Wal Tabi'a. And Sa'ursi Al Kutub Ila Kul Al Qur Al Jabali Wal Sahari. Things changed a bit in her plan. Hadi Kanat Khutati Wa Fahantu Bihasabi Khutati Wa Kan Hadi Khutati. And she's facing difficulties. I loved her ending. It's kind of sad, but <laughs> but very uh, very interesting that students were able to do that. Okay, back to our um, presentation in this case. Okay, so I have just some suggestions uh, that you need to bear in mind when dealing with Arabic comics. First of all where to find Arabic comics online. Most of you, I guess, uh, teaching in the US, 
Um, so really finding an Arabic comic, you know, it's a bit difficult. So there are things that you could do to find some Arabic comics, particularly if you're interested in modern ones and recent ones. First of all, it's Kutubna. I'll show you uh, how to find some of this. Uh, Rusumet Qahira. She's an artist that does um, these comics on Qahira, superhero, like um, a girl with hijab that is a superhero and she's like uh, fights crime and um, things. Tuk Tuk, I'm pretty familiar if people have, uh, this is one of the modern ones. And the American University in Beirut has an awesome list that you can also check. So I'll quickly show you these. So if you go to kutubna.net, you're going to go for ebooks, uh, ebooks, sorry, ebook section, and then you have comics. So that's a 76 uh, comics that you can actually see in here. And then you can, ah, uh, you can purchase. <laughs> it's uh, pretty cheap, actually. Rusumet. Um, it's an application mostly, so you can download it in Google Play or App Store. And then again, this have more um, types. I think they have Samendel, and Samendel is, um, again, they have Tuktuk here, but they have, I think they have Samendel, and uh, the last time I checked, and this is the Lebanese one. So they have some different comics that you can uh, check, and here's Kahira. Ah, Kahira offers her comics in um, English and in Arabic as well. So you might check from here. Um, Tuk Tuk magazine. So Tuk Tuk has some of that, like Shahadun Wale. This is, a, I think it's a novel that they transferred it to a comic, Hadassa Bil Fial, where I pulled out the silent comic from, and the different episodes of, of volumes of Tuk Tuk. And Lutfi Zayed has a recent one. I like his illustrations very much. Um, again, the American University in Beirut has, you know, so just some and so on. They has a this interesting list uh, you can check as well. Okay. One more thing uh, is, as you can see, the comics that I've shown you and a lot of the uh, the comics written in Arabic would be using handwritten fonts. There are some that would be typed, but a lot of it, I think, due to artistic reasons that they do with, um, they use their handwriting. And something like Tuk Tuk might give you a very hard time to decipher what they're writing, uh, let alone the student. Um, for me, I do read that because my handwriting is awful, but uh, for my students, they had a difficulty with that. So that's something that you need to bear in mind. Um, students found that, in my study, students found that uh, reading comic with Arabic handwritten script was challenging, but yet ben beneficial because it familiarizes them with Arabic handwritten uh, fonts. So some of the suggestions is that you can actually give a short introduction to Arabic handwriting before you actually dive into the comic or overwrite the handwritten fonts. I'll show you an example or have a clear companion text that kind of clarifies the text bubbles that are too difficult to read. This was a suggestion actually from one of the students. Um, so that's how, sorry, that's how you can overwrite a handwritten comic. So this was originally handwritten and uh, you can overwrite it by typing. If, if you found that it's really difficult, it's gonna be very difficult for the students. Uh, one last tip, or I hope, <laughs> uh, one of the tips that I would suggest that you um, pay attention to, I personally was not focusing on that point as much um, at the beginning, is that you have to train your students to be cultural observers of the comic. So do not only ask them to focus on the linguistic codes, but also the visual codes represented in the comic, the illustrations, the background, the characters. This helps a lot when it comes to uh, culture and uh, you know understanding the story comprehension. You know the illustrations are there to assess the student with their or to assess the read to assist the reader with their um, reading. Um, in spite, you know, despite that actually comics have a low reading load, some of the comics, 
but comics are full of culture and linguistic information so you need some time with it um, and you do not be fooled by the idea that oh there's one kind of line over there or one narration box sometimes it takes um, you more time or it takes the student also more time to kind of fully digest the information given through that comic so sometimes the codes in there are unfamiliar to them uh, so they you need to kind of spend some time with that uh, if you're wondering how students were perceived such uh, perceived uh, comics um, reading and creating comics in the, in the classroom so one of the things that you could check um, my thesis I've conducted a study on that uh, so most of the students found that it motivates them to read more, it helps them to promote their vocabulary and grammar acquisition, particularly comprehension and making inferences. They found the idea that it contained pictures and low reading load and an interesting plot, it's authentic, mixes between uh, Fosha and Amir, that, that this was uh, the most useful for them for their vocabulary acquisition. As to the creating tasks, creating writing tasks, uh, sorry, creating comics tasks, uh, they found it enjoyable and motivating. Bear in mind, because you know this was done digitally, uh, it's a time-consuming task and a challenging task to some students. So there is a good number of students that said, it takes me a lot of time, maybe not because of the tool, but because of the planning and have to decide how to kind of um, design my story and design my comic. Um, However, students felt like, oh, I'm proud of what I've done. They felt a, a sense of accomplishment when they created a comic. Uh, this allowed them definitely to be more creative and use their imagination. And it was helpful for the language proficiency. Um, again, they found also Storyboard that a resourceful and intuitive with based tool to create comics. Um, and that's, that's it really. <laughs> If you have any questions, please let me know or any kind of ideas that, you know, you've seen some of these examples and some of these activities that I've presented to you that maybe that sparked uh, an idea that you can share with us. Uh, that would be great. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you, Mona. And just a reminder, everyone, those links, I will be sending those out with the recording. But we did have a couple questions coming in. Um, someone had asked about uh, making these comics is, do you have any ideas of how to do this with maybe very new students, the novice level, who don't have a lot of language skills or background? Mm -hmm. So some of the classes that uh, I've given, not absolute beginners, um, I would not recommend that, but uh, for actually A2 level, they can do it and they did some. Um, uh, I had a class in Amir, Egyptian dialect A2 level. And there are some of the comics that you can find that is very short and it represents, um, you know, very simple language. Or you can also ask your students very simple tasks. And for example, one of the tasks was um, to, oh, actually, that junior one, I can share it with you right now. So that one, I hope I answered your question. So that, that one was represented to an A2 level in, um, in a Amir class. And then they were asked actually to change um, the story and to change the ending. So they kept the characters, but the ending would, different, would differ. And they, were, they did a good job. They did a great job with it. Um, but yeah, I expect some difficulties, uh, particularly in terms of you know, and so on. There are some expressions that you might find that you have to kind of pre-introduce. Um, but there are simple things that you could do uh, with uh, with comics. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Uh, we have, yeah, I think so. Uh, we had a question asking about um, for when you have them maybe work in pairs or in groups when they're reading them out loud, what what exactly are they doing? What kind of, are they do, each reading a panel or are they just reading their own work? What can you clarify? How they... um, right, for my case again, uh, what I did is I did not ask them to read it um, in the class. I asked them 
um, sometimes I did ask them to prepare it beforehand, just, you know, go over it be on your own without using uh, any kind of translations, if I found like they're not going to do it, um, or uh, be presented with it in the class. So they are in groups and then they would read it together and then kind of, oh, okay, so let's discuss it together after at the end. Um, but reading aloud, I have not focused on that as much, but some of the suggestions and some of the activities that I think I did at one time, that students enjoyed, was actually that they acted out the comic and they read it aloud with the appropriate intonation and so on. So this was one of the interesting activities that they did. And um, they, the ones suggested that, and uh, they also suggested reading their own comics in class. So, which was also interesting. Thanks, Mona. Uh, we have a question of um, how do you plan your lessons? Do you just do it around one topic or how do you sort of approach that? Well, I think my lesson <laughs> would be a bit different from the way that you're going to do it because this is, was an online course that are totally based on comics. Um, so it's, you know, it was really based on the comic rather than I have to teach them something. So I just but gathered a bunch of comics that are suitable for different levels and then I saw okay this is an interesting comic let's create a topic on it and then create a, a writing task on it so really what um what triggered the lesson kind of objective was the comic itself if I found the comic is suitable for the level and um interesting enough I would present it to them and then within a particular theme and then ask them to create something on it. Usually if you're doing it in your classroom, maybe you're, going, you're not going to focus mainly on comics on that case, you would present it within a theme uh, or uh, yeah, any, I would not really recommend the idea of um, asking your students every single class to create a comic because that might be tedious. <laughs> they're they're going to take some time and it's going to annoy them a bit. But you know, you can integrate it in your classes, whether the, the comics in general or the, the, the comic creation tasks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, anyone else have any other questions? Please type it into the box. Um, we did have one person ask if you know of any, and forgive me if I pronounce this wrong, um, Amaya Humor Resources, A M M I Y A. Amia, yeah. So that's the Amia. dialect. Oh, yeah, they're spoken for. Well done. <laughs> but um, yeah, like um, humor resources. So I think he's asking like humor, right? Like things that are funny. Some of yeah. the comics. Are, yeah. Some of the comics are characters caricatures are interesting. I do not recall a particular thing. There's something that I purchased recently that contained a bunch of caricatures, but mostly they were political. Um, you can actually, you know, it's easy to find things on Facebook that you know, like um, jokes and funny buns and stuff like that. So Facebook would be a good option for you. But for comics, um, yeah, I think I enjoyed uh, if you were in Egypt, for example, you can get uh, some of the Aladdin or, you know, took the custom. But uh, by the way, pay attention to some of the language because th there might be cussing words or things like that that you want to avoid. Um, so that that's also uh, to consider. I think what I have <laughs> is these different resources. You can take a look at them. And if you found something that is funny enough, you can use it in your classes. But, yeah. Fabulous. Thank you. And then we did have one person ask about the um, the the comic website, the creation one, about about how much do you pay for that, the one that your students were using. All right. So I did. Um, let me go back and actually show you. I don't really remember right now because I'm no longer. Uh, I did it for a while and that's it. So you can, I guess, you can check. I'm not really sure. The link will be on the document. And then you can okay, check that, if you... That's fine. Yeah, we can just have yeah. the person check. Yeah, so we'll have all of these um, to go through. Um, yeah. Right. 
So yeah, it depends on the number of students you have. But for me, it's usually in Egyptian pounds. I guess for you would be differently. Right. So you can check that. Perfect. Okay. Anyone have any final questions for Mona? Fabulous topic. So thank you so much, Mona. Okay. Really neat <laughs> thank I have you a for making it. It's great. Okay. I don't see any other questions coming in. So, George or Mimi, do either of you have anything before we wrap up? I have a comment, Genevieve. Hello? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Mona, I just want to say thank you so much for this uh, valuable presentation and for these great resources, uh, uh, either the one that you shared for us to be able to use that they are already done or how to create our own um, uh, comics with other students. I think what I really loved about this presentation, two things that we are usually sometimes struggling with them is like, how did you use, how you used the comics to integrate both Amiya and modern standard Arabic and to have uh, to have them kind of interact with each other and how to use and how you use it in a way that in fact translates to real life when you are narrating it's in modern standard Arabic but when the uh, conversation is happening is in Amiya which I, mm -hmm. uh, I really love the idea I've never thought about it before and I think this is a great way uh, for the teachers who are trying to bring Amiya to the classroom uh, and to mix it with modern standard Arabic that's a great way um, the other uh, thing that I really loved about your presentation is how it did it encompassed the three modes of communication that we usually talk about the interpretive the interpersonal and the presentational the students are working to get, are, are interpreting all these pictures and they are interpreting the story and then they are working in an interpersonal mode with each other to create these uh, bubbles and this conversation and then they are doing the presentational writing and I also loved when you said uh, even you you had a presentational speaking when they acted out these comics, which I found like this is amazing uh, to kind of have yeah. uh, such, such a project um, with the students. Thank you so much. I mean, this is definitely, um, I agree, this is interesting and uh, you will get a lot of uh, ideas also from the students when you start implementing these ideas. So, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. This is, You're welcome. Uh, nice of I, you. I, I, <laughs> Uh, I would like to add as well, thank you so much, Muna. And I really appreciate that you mentioned about culturally sensitive images that you're using, because I have seen some people, you know, uh, they're not aware of that, they forget about it. However, when students, they look at it, the comprehensible input that we're having is not giving the right message. So thank you so much for uh, giving that uh, point of view that it's very important. It's not only the language, it's the visuals what we're doing as well because there is a message that you know we are giving it to our students uh, as george uh, mentioned about the three modes it's amazing it's and it's highly highly entertaining for students to do it thank you so much for for this informative uh, presentation <laughs> thank you so much george and mimi thank you so much You're if, if there are no more questions, I would like to, uh, on behalf of everyone here tonight, first thank you all for being uh, for attending this presentation. Uh, as Genevieve mentioned in the beginning, we are going to be uh, the the workshop was recorded and going to be shared with you uh, through the Actful Arabic Sig Community Wall. Uh, Muna, again, uh, a big big thank you. I don't think we can like thank you for really staying up so late, and I hope that you will have. <laughs> some time to rest before you go to work and uh, you engage again with your students. Uh, and I hope that you tell them on our behalf how we loved and how we appreciated their, uh, uh, their use of the Arabic language and how the representation of the Arabic culture, their creativity was uh, uh, very much like uh, present and it was really rewarding to see what they were able to do with the language uh, through these uh, comics. And I would like to uh, remind everyone present with us tonight that we are going to have a second webinar on Wednesday, April 15th, which is Teaching Arabic with Films, and the presenter is Lanise Fadl uh, from New York. So please uh, join us for that webinar. Again, um, we are trying to connect you with all these um, great speakers and great 
great teachers to share the best practices that they are having in their classes. And finally, uh, a big thank you to Mimi, to Fadi, and to Genevieve for all their help with setting up uh, the workshop tonight. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you again to everyone who attended. Hope everyone got some really amazing information. And we look forward to seeing you at a future webinar. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you again.